Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this is episode number five and yes I have two rods in my hand and that is because we're going to set the toe. Now before we start working on the toe I just want to give a couple of clarifications regarding the previous episode where we were setting the camber. There were a lot of comments and discussions about you can't set the camber to minus two degrees that's way too much. Well I don't know where that idea comes from. As I said initially in the video on the camera, it all depends for what purpose you're going to use the car. What is the track? What is your driving style? What kind of tires you have? So at the end of the day, it is all about having maximum grip. And I know there was a lot of debate on what is grip and what is friction, but I don't want to get into this. The idea is to have a maximum amount of patch on the tarmac. That's what you want to get on a race car when you corner. And that's why you have to set the camber. And again, it depends on what track it is. It depends how you drive. It depends on your suspension. It depends on your roll. A lot of factors have an influence on it. Now, my race car, the Koenig, I do not have the factory specs at all. It's blank. There is absolutely nothing out there that can tell me what I should set. So I started off with a baseline. And the baseline is a starting point. We'll see on the track what it gives us because you always have to adjust it. And let me give you a little explanation on how that adjustment is done. When I was finished setting up the camera on my car, I ended up with minus 1.75 degrees. And that is just my baseline. Now, once I take the car to the track, I'm going to do a couple of test runs and then we'll measure the temperature on the inner side, the middle and the outer side. So I can carve up this blue band in three areas, outer, middle and inner and the point is if I stop after a couple of laps and I see that my outer temperature is much higher than my inner temperature then I don't have enough negative camber and I need to increase the negative camber if my inner temperature was higher than my outer temperature then I need to reduce my negative camber but tire pressure is also important. Imagine that the outer one is cold, the inner one is cold, and the middle one is hot. That means my tires are overinflated. So I have to let some pressure go. And then finally, uh, if the inner side is hot and the outer side is hot and the middle area is actually cold, then that means my tires need more pressure. So you really need to measure your tires uh, on the track after the trial and then adjust your camber. That's enough talk about camber. So now let's get on with the toe adjustment. Toe is defined as the position of the tires on the horizontal plane towards the center of the car. Now that is a mouthful but if the tires are pointing inwards to the center of the car, then we talk about toe in. If the tires are pointing outwards of the center of the car, then we talk about toe out. So we got two types, toe in and toe out. Both have the advantages and disadvantages. Toe in is when both tires are pointing in the driving direction towards the center of the car. And in essence, they are pulling the car into a straight line. So toe in makes straight line driving very stable. However, it is a bit more reluctant if you need to turn because the car wants to go straight. So you have to overcome that little bit of force. That's why we call often toe in is enhancing or enriching the understeer. So in other words, you will need to put some more force onto the steering wheel to get the car to turn. But once it turns, it will be all right. And it feels like the car is planted. And that is a good thing for beginners on the track. But keep in mind, the more toe-in you have, the more scrub you have of the tires on the tarmac. So the warmer they get and the faster they will wear out. The only negative side on toe-in is that you don't have all that feeling on the steering wheel. 
if you're setting the wheels outwards from the center line of the car in the forward driving direction, then we talk about toe out. And that is not very stable at all on straight line driving because these wheels are trying to pull the car left and right. So it's going to feel very, very unstable. But you really have a lot of feeling on the steering. So if you are a very experienced driver, maybe you might want to drive it some toe out and you will react very quickly on the steering wheel to correct anything because the good thing about toe out is that it lets you corner or get into the corner very easily because toe out is not increasing the understeer, it's decreasing the understeer. On this race car, I'm going to set the front wheels to toe in, probably about one millimeter. And in the back, uh, my rear wheels, I do the same. I haven't talked about toe in or toe out on the rear wheels, but if you set toe in on the rear wheels, that is going to compensate for your oversteer. It's going to try to keep that car in place. I haven't seen a lot of cars with toe out, to be very honest, but they do exist. Um, in Rallycross, for instance, I have seen them. Uh, four by fours, sometimes you see it. But overall, it all depends uh, on which track you're going to drive on and how good you are. So if you're going on the racetrack uh, with a race car like this one and you have long straight stretches for high speed, you want to have some toe in. And if you're not that experienced as a driver, and I'm not, I drive, but I'm not experienced at all. I'm an old man. Um, then I'm not that quick in reacting on the steering wheel. So then I don't want to go to toe out. Although that is good for cornering. Anyway, um, let's see what we're going to need in terms of tools. I am a farmer's boy and we tend to keep things simple and stupid. The KISS principle. And this is also what we're going to do for the toe alignment. All you're going to need is some bars. I have the bars right here. And I'll come back to those. And you can get those in any store. And you put some marks on it. But you'll see that in a few seconds. You're going to need two strings and they should be pretty thin and they don't have to be fancy like this. You could use any string you want, but I'm using these because I do this at regular times. And you're going to need like two, four jacks or four stands or four heavy pieces of metal that you can set around the four corners of the car. And a very simple ruler. This is all you're going to need to set your toe. So now let's have a look on these tubes, what this is about, and then we're going to set it up. So you're going to need at least two tubes that are wider than the track width of your car. So if your car is 1 meter 50, go for 2 meter tubes. And I actually have gone for 2 meter tubes and you can see them right here. These tubes have to be of exactly the same length, right? Keep that in mind. They should be not different because if they are, then your measurements will be off. And then you will have to make some markings on those tubes at specific distances. It doesn't really matter where you make the markings, but they have to be the same on all tubes. So if you place them next to each other, they should line up correctly. Let me show you those markings and then I'll show you an easy way to put those markings up. Don't use a hacksaw or anything like that. I have a much easier way. So here you see the two tubes next to each other and you can see that the markings I put up lining up and that's important they should be really accurate and it doesn't really matter how far from the edge you do it and on how many you place i placed about five of them but that's not important as long as they are really lined up right and this is the other side of the two tubes so let me now show you on how you can make these correct markings so i guess you all know what this is this is what we call a tube cutter you put the tube in between and then you tighten that up and you rotate and then you can cut the tube. Well, I'm going to use this to mark actually the tube. So here's the tube and I already have some marks on it, but I'm going to show you and so how you can do a straight mark on that. So we're just putting it in there, tighten it slightly and I'm just going to rotate it while I'm tightening it. Now, you don't want to keep rotating it too long and not too much force because otherwise you will cut the tube and that's not the intent. But you can see we got a nice groove in it. 
and you can do this a couple of times on different distances and then you have a proper solution. Huh? This works always great and it gives you really a straight mark. I'm just going to do one more so you can actually see them then. Uh, one more. You know, it doesn't take a lot of effort. There you go. So I just did a couple of marks and this always works perfectly. So now it's time to set up a wire system. So I'm going to install one bar in the front of the car, the other bar in the back of the car. I will have them rest on the jacks that I have, but you can use whatever stand you have. So the way we go in to do this alignment is by placing, first of all, four jack stands around the car. So one on each corner. And I'm trying to place those at a certain distance from the wheel. Positioning the jacks. And I'm placing them in front of the wheels and I'm trying to get them from a certain distance from the front wheels. It doesn't matter how much that is. We do the same thing in the back. And here we got them already set up. Right, so pretty easy stuff. So you want to make sure that the height of these stands will cause the wire or the string once we put it up, is going right through the middle of the wheel hub. By the way, this is a very precise method, and even Formula One racing teams are still using that today. It beats the laser, believe me, but you have to be a bit patient. So let's start putting it together. Now that we have the jack stands in place, we go in to install the bar in the front of the car and the bar in the back of the car. And right now it doesn't really matter how far they need to stick out on either side just place them for now and you might have noticed that the bars with the red tape are on the left hand side and there's a good reason for that because i know that these markings on that side are identical to each other for both bars next we're going to connect the string from the bar in the front left hand side to the bar in the back left hand side So I'm going to let it sit on the second marking. So I don't want to have it too far out of the wheels, just the second marking on this bar and the second marking on the other side. It's important that the string goes straight through the middle of the wheel. Place the string at the same marker on the front and the back bar. And then we do exactly the same thing on the other side. With the wireframe now in place, now we need to place it completely parallel to the car. And therefore, we're going to pick one wheel, and in this case, we're going to use the left rear wheel, and we'll measure the distance between the center of the wheel hub and the string. Note the number, and then go to the opposite side on the same axle, and measure the right rear wheel. And you should have exactly the same distance. If it's not the same distance, then just shuffle, the bar left or right until both sides are equal. So you might have to go back and forth a couple of times. Once that is in place, then you go to the front wheels and you do exactly the same thing. You measure from the left front wheel, the distance between the center of the wheel hub to the string, and then you go on the opposite side and compare the values. If they are not equal, and most likely they will not be, then you move the front bar left and right until you have an equal measurements. Once you've done with this, you have to go back to the rear wheels and repeat the process. You might have to do this about three to four times. So now that we have the wireframe fully parallel to the car, we can start to adjust the toe in. And on this car, we'll actually do toe in, but you could do as well toe out if you wanted to. So I'm going to select one wheel, and in this case, the left rear wheel, where we will measure the distance between the front of the rim. And remember, this is at the middle of the rim in the front side towards the string. And then we measure the same thing, but at the back of that rim towards the string. Now we have two values and we will compare these values with each other. If A is bigger than B, then you have toe in. Now, typically that will be in millimeters and I'm going to set mine to about 1.5 millimeters. So my A will be 1.5 millimeter larger than my B. In other words, now I have toe in. And of course, you adjust the toe in on the toe rod at the back of the wheels. 
And then I'm going to move to the other side of the car. I will adjust the right rear wheel and I do exactly the same exercise. For the front alignment, set the steering wheel to its center position and make sure that it can't move anymore. You might have noticed that I have the wheels actually on those slip plates. It makes it easy to set. So let's measure what we have here. Seven and eight. Now that's a lot, so way too much toe in. Uh, so I will have to change that. Seventy-six and a half. That's good. One and a half in the front. I've set up the baseline on this car with 1.5 degrees of toe in on the front and one degree of toe in on the back. And that's going to be my baseline. And we'll see on the track what it does when we do the shakedown. But that's going to give me straight line stability for sure. And it's going to feel like the car is kind of planted. It's going to reduce the oversteer in the back. I may have a little bit more understeer in the front because of the toe in but I don't think that's going to be a problem. But we'll see. Um, again, I didn't want to go too extreme because then you have a lot of wear and tear on the tires. And of course, that's not what we want to have either. So you always have to seek for a balance. So don't take these values for granted on your car. Uh, you really need to experiment with it and find out what's best for your car on what track. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you in my next video, which will be all about caster and kingpin inclination.